Hey, it's Tom and Mike from Take Time to Travel. Rome is a spectacular city known for its incredible landmarks, its awe-inspiring ancient ruins, and of course, lots of delicious Italian food. Today, we're going to take you on a food tour in Rome and show you some of the city's best restaurants, as well as breathtaking terraces and places to get delicious sweets to give you some ideas on where to eat during your trip to Italy's capital. We'll start with one of Rome's many beautiful street-side patios at a traditional Italian restaurant called Saltimbocca Ristorante. It's always busy, so make sure to book your reservation in advance, like we did. We sat down, had a look at the menu, and I ordered an Aperol Spritz, my favorite drink in Italy. And Mike chose a mojito, which had a great presentation. Then as an appetizer, we shared the Millefoglie Mediterraneo with grilled aubergine and zucchini, mozzarella di bufala, fresh tomato, and homemade basil oil. For our first course, I chose the Tonarelli pasta with mussels, which is a fresh homemade spaghetti with cherry tomatoes, pecorino cheese, and tons of mussels. Tom had the pesto fettuccine with shrimp and roasted cherry tomatoes. After that, for a second course, I had this massive plate of fried calamari and shrimps that would have been more than enough for both of us. And Tom chose the veal escallop with ham and sage, which was delicious, just like everything else at Saltimbocca Restaurante. Next, we'll try another Italian restaurant on a picturesque street with a lovely outdoor dining area called Unique Restaurant. We chose a seat on the patio, browsed over the menu, and started with a caprese salad with buffalo mozzarella, fresh tomatoes, and basil. For drinks, Tom got an Aperol Spritz, as he usually does, and I had the Peretti beer, which was perfect on a hot day. Then, it was time for our pasta dishes. Tom ordered the Tortello di Mare, which is a homemade pasta filled with monkfish fillet, zucchini, lemon, capers, and fish stew. And I ate the spaghetti alla carbonara with egg, pecorino cheese, bacon, and black pepper. Both of our pastas were delicious, but we preferred the Tortello di Mare. Next, we shared the Dominante pizza with potatoes, homemade porchetta, and mozzarella cheese which we also added truffles to for an extra 15 euros. We thought that the pizza with truffles was going to be 15 euros in total, but it turned out to be added on top of the 12 euro pizza, more than doubling the price, but it tasted incredible. We absolutely loved it. After that wonderful meal, we'll head over to one of the city's luxurious five-star hotels called the Pantheon Iconic Rome Hotel where we'll head inside their stylish lobby, then take the elevator up to their spectacular rooftop terrace for our dinner reservation at the Divinity Restaurant and Lounge Bar. Their outdoor seating area is huge and continues down the length of the building with large umbrellas and attractive conversation areas that are the perfect place to enjoy the warm evening weather and the incredible city view, as well as the setting sun over Rome's rooftops and landmarks. To start our meal, we were served some complimentary starters and a bread basket to enjoy with our Aperol spritzes, which were very tasty. Then, as an appetizer, we shared the salmon carpaccio with quinoa and avocado, which was a great way to start our meal. It was delicious. For our pasta dish, I chose the goat cheese ravioli with carrots, which was exceptional. And Tom chose the puttanesca di mare, which was loaded with seafood and also tasted wonderful. And to finish our meal, we shared an Italian classic, the margarita pizza, which was also amazing, just like our entire experience at Divinity Restaurant. If you're looking for a less expensive place to eat, make sure to check out the renowned bakery and deli, Antico Forno Roscioli. Inside, you'll find lots of appetizing baked goods and sweets, as well as savory snacks and thin crust pizzas to choose from. We decided to get something sweet and something savory. Mmm, doesn't that look good? 
I couldn't wait to try the Supli rice and cheese balls with tomato sauce. They were loaded with mozzarella cheese and tasted much better than the arancini balls I'm used to, but I certainly made a mess of that bite. After we ate those, it was time for the huge Sicilian cannoli, which was pistachio flavored and tasted amazing. Now, let's make our way over to the next restaurant we're going to show you. It's another popular Italian eatery called Cantina e Cucina. Let's head inside and check it out. The restaurant's interior is very quaint and cozy, with a casual rustic vintage vibe. We were seated at a table right at the front and started with a couple of Peroni beers, as well as a large plate of prosciutto and melon, which I loved. It tasted incredible. For our main course, Mike had the pizza contadina with tomato, mozzarella, zucchini, eggplant, and peppers. And I chose the tonorello carbonara with egg, bacon, and artichokes. Everything was delicious, and we thought the meal was very reasonably priced. But it can get busy, so try to go early or make a reservation. The next restaurant is called In Roma Since 1917. It also serves Italian cuisine and has a lovely view from its patios of lush greenery and centuries-old buildings. We started our meal by sharing the aubergine medallion parmigiana with buffalo mozzarella, cacio ricotta cheese, and tomato sauce, along with a lemoncello spritz for me and an aperol spritz for Tom, which were perfect on this 40-degree day. Then, for our pasta dishes, I chose the classic carbonara with dried pork cheek, cheese, creamy egg, and black pepper. And Tom got the cacio e pepe gnocchi with crunchy artichokes, pecorino romano cheese, and four types of pepper. And for our second course, we shared the involtini alla romana, which are meat roulade rolls with carrots and celery in tomato sauce. Overall, we really enjoyed our meal at In Roma. The view was lovely, we had great service, and the food was amazing. After that, we're going to head over to a Michelin-recommended restaurant called Chipasso Bistro. Let's head inside for our dinner reservation, past the hungry diners, and underneath the beautiful brick archways, to show you what makes this eatery so special. To start, we were served some large complimentary olives. Then to drink, we each had an Aperol spritz, no surprise there. And as an appetizer, we ordered their best seller, the Chef's Burrata, served on chilled tomato pudding with homemade marinated anchovies and basil pesto. For our first course, I chose the Grishia Estiva, which is a Meze Maniche short pasta with pork cheek, pecorino cheese, and fresh figs and Tom got the ravioli cacio e pepe, stuffed with ricotta and pecorino cheese, with a cheese and black pepper sauce, as well as crispy leeks and lime. Both of our pastas were delicious. We can't decide which one we liked better. For our second courses, I had the codfish, which was breaded with aromatic herbs and served with pecorino crumble, vinaigrette, and chickpea hummus with bergamot. Tom ordered the Saltambocca alla Romana, which is a veal escallop with parma ham, sage, and peas cream. Everything we ate from Chipasso Bistro was exceptional. Next, we'll head down this cobbled lane over to a traditional Roman restaurant called Ristorante Virginiae. We got a seat on the patio and ordered a couple of Aperol spritzes to begin our meal. As an appetizer, we shared the Burrata Casificio Maldera with vegetables in oil of the day. Then for our first course, Mike decided to get the Tonarelli al Pesto, which is an egg pasta with pesto sauce. And I chose the homemade ravioli stuffed with spinach and ricotta cheese in a butter and sage sauce. And for our second course, we split this huge portion of baked lamb, which came with a generous helping of roasted potatoes. Everything was delicious, especially the lamb and the pasta dishes. And of course, when in Rome, you have to get some gelato, like we did from Gelaterio e Sarci. Let's head inside this busy little place and give it a try. They had a mouth-watering assortment of gelato flavors, including fresh fruits, cheesecake, milk crunchy pistachio, and tiramisu, to name a few. 
Mike chose the banana gelato and I got the cheesecake gelato, both of which cost three euros each. They were super tasty and were the perfect way to cool down on this hot day. Well, we hope you enjoyed our Rome food tour and we gave you some good ideas on where to eat during your trip to Rome. We also have a Venice food tour video to give you some ideas on where to eat during your trip to Venice, Italy. As always, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications on our future videos. And remember, take time to travel. Catch you on the next one.